Hi everyone, my name is Martin and today we'll have a look at one of my demos I did for the Iconica Sections and Players library for the Halion platform. Steinberg released that thing about one and a half years ago and I've had the honor of composing the trailer track for the release. And this very piece we'll have a closer look at today. So, just have fun and let's enter the sonic world of the Iconica Orchestra together. What I want to do now is to show you how I worked with the Iconica section and players library. As I'm saying in every video of this kind, I don't want to be your teacher or instructor. I just want to show you kind of a behind the scenes view of how I work with this library for you being able to see what you otherwise could only imagine while watching the trailer. What you can see when looking at the project is that everything is organized around the four sections of the orchestra. What is of mere importance for me as a media composer, being on a very tight schedule all the time, is having an extremely well organized session that allows me to focus myself on every goal I have to meet in a given time. Folder tracks here are, in a way, indispensable for getting a quick overview of what is going on in the session, especially when you're handling vast templates with easily over a thousand tracks. As you can see, I can dial out and in here within every section. Let's say I want to play the oboe here within the woodwinds, go there and start playing. And um, as you can see too, I have built my session around the idea of having one instance of Halion Sonic, like for the piccolo here, one instance for each and every instrument of the orchestra. And look at that, the bassoon, one, two, always, uh, within every track here, there is one instance of Halion Sonic, and so I can easily play every instrument that I wanna play. That allows me not only to, in a way, read the session like a printed score of the piece, but also easily navigate and play myself through the orchestra colors. It's this everything on my fingertips thing I like very much. I've seen many musicians taking a totally different attempt by only loading those instruments they actually use in a track. That's the thing that works for me sometimes too, but most of the time I prefer it the other way around. Let's start focusing on the string section here. As in very many orchestra pieces out there, the foundation of this track is laid out in the strings. Let's listen to the whole thing while soloing the strings.
As you can easily hear, that's the basement of the track. You can nearly recognize every aspect of the music. Let's have a look at the string section within the editor window. Let me just dial in a bit. I'll dial out. So. Like that. Now we have a clear visualization of what is happening. The track is unfolding in little sections, starting with very sparsely and reduced, quickly opening up in the mid-range and the top end. That was one of the most important aspects I wanted to work on with this particular trailer, because what is going on in the film is simply a narrative on the same level, right? One section comes after the other, and in the end we have the conclusion of what it's all about. So, my feeling was to give the whole thing a deeper dramaturgy, to create a strong emotive touch that is catching the audience from the very beginning of the film, not letting any single one escape from this trip until it's over. I'm achieving this not only by the evolving form here. The second important thing is rhythm. As you can see in the tempo track, we have an interesting pattern of meter changes here. Four, three, four, and five eighths. This pattern is then looping until the break at the end of the track. This randomness, because hands down, no one checks this out while listening to the piece for the first time. This Randomness creates the suspense from the very beginning. You don't know what's happening next, but the bars and meters are only the background. All of this is represented in the main thematical element of the track. Um, let's have a look at that. It's based here in the channels. As you can see, the pattern slightly changes from time to time to stretch the, the tension on the melodic parameter until the main theme appears in the next section. Let's now have a first look at the iconic sections and players. Surface, I want to have this one. I've chosen this particular part for an introduction to the player because the short articulations of the string section is one of the things I like the most within Iconica. By the way, I don't have to explain so much here. The surface looks absolutely clear and self-explaining. We have the edit page here. And that's our main screen for the work with the library. It's subdivided into the mixer page here and the main page. Some brief thing about the mixing setup I used. I wanted to sound natural, so I first of all checked out the sound of every instrument and I all, all of my sound here is centered around the tree. And then I added some close micing from to, to, to the very liking of the of, of every single instrument. The most important thing for you to to know is that I like this surface a lot because everything I want to have is is there and nothing more. I have most of the common articulations for the string sections sorted in short notes and long notes. So I have one layer here. For the short notes, one layer for the long notes, and that's it. I don't need anything more. So the rest is organized via key switches, and you can easily navigate through uh, through the articulations here. You can add some, you can sort something out. 
So everything is in the right place. You have round robins here, release, attack, the level, uh, tuning scale, whoever needs that. And that's it. You can start making music right ahead. And that's a really well done player. So thanks for that, Steinberg. Well done. Let's now listen again to the cello part at the beginning and then looking a bit into the next section. As you can see, I'm only using the spiccato articulation. That's not only because that would be the natural way the players would play this part in this particular tempo, but the spiccato articulation of Iconica has all that definition, clearance and power I need. The instrument feels alive and easily breathes emotion. You see that the whole thing is not quantized to death, but played and left in a quite natural way. What's important for me always is sounding natural, not over quantized, not too technical to create the illusion of a real orchestra sitting in front of you playing that thing. I'm adding the violas, showing you how marvelously these two blend together. Of course, the cello dominate the line, but the violas enlarge and support it. The cello divisi section down here supports the harmony in the tenor bass range and gives us an idea of what the chords might be, the, 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 the harmonic context of this melody. Let's now look at a phenomenon, what I'm calling framing. I'm talking about the second violins up here and the basses down here. The tension comes from the sustained bowings in the basses in combination with the trills in the second violins. At bar nine, the second violins change from trill to tremolo, a technique that often sounds quite similar to the trills. The difference is that the flickering within the sound comes from the finger and the trills and from the bow and the tremolo. So the trills are in a way more intimate and more quiet than the tremolo with its boy nose in it. Starting with the trills and opening into the tremolo is then like a sublime boost of energy that supports the development of the intro. Let's listen to that in solo mode. I think that's interesting. And together with the rest. But why starting with the second violins here? Orchestrating in this piece is a kind of holding back the cavalry till this very moment when the enemy is in the very position to hit, right? And that's where the, my first violins come in. When adding the highest strings, the whole string section is complete again. I want to briefly show you the use of first and second violins while working with samples of full sections. As you can see, within this classical four 
way closed movement here. The first violins are in the lead with the upper voice to give the melody the brilliance and standout qualities it needs. The three lower voices are done with the second violin still being same the section size in every single voice. But the more intimate character of the second violins compensates that so that I get a very homogeneous sound for this part. In the following section, the first violins double the melody for even more power and second violins with the help of the violas fill up the movement. As you can see here. See? Doubling of the melody, the rest fills up the harmony in a bit lower range. It gives the feeling of more powerful appearance of the melody and a dramatic shift to an even higher level. Yeah, let's listen to that again. Okay, let's go on by having a brief look at the brass section. Let's first of all hear what happens when adding the brass to the strings and listen to the whole thing again. Three little things to mention here. Let's open all the brass instruments. First is the bass supporting in the intro with the low brass instruments over here. Let's listen to that without the strings. Nice and smooth supporting, right? And let's listen to it with the strings again. The second thing is the very typical four voice movement in the tenor range of the horns over here. As you can see I just played the whole thing with the solo French horn for the library doesn't offer four different horns and hands down who needs them here. To get a little more detail I could have spread out the four different instances of the same horn and, and arranging them in the stereo field but the workload doing such a thing doesn't pay the bill so you could just get an image of what the library does right out of the box. Here it is. Soloed. And it really works in this context. Last thing to mention is the short articulations in the last passage, featuring the trumpets with this fanfare motif here and the other brass instruments supporting harmony and rhythm for impact and power. Let's listen to that solo mode. Again, 
with the strings. What I most love within the set of instruments in Iconica are the woodwinds. They are so much fun to play with, as they are so natural and inspiring in the same way. Let's listen to them solo for one time, and you can easily hear what I mean. Funny listening to this piece with only the woodwinds on, right? Let me focus on one little detail, this little fragment of the piccolo at the beginning. As you may have heard, I mix and blend two articulations together. It begins with a trill going into a sustained note. Let me demonstrate that. We have the trills triggered here, going in a sustained note right here. Many libraries have problems with such workarounds, believe me. Not so Iconica, and that's another major pro in my opinion. You can easily create a fluent transition from trill to sustain in nearly no time. How nicely the whole section works together, you can hear best in the ending part again. Because there, nearly all of the instruments play together. Doesn't need any more words, right? Sounds very nice. Last but not least, let's take a look at the percussion. Orchestration for me is like playing around with colors, like a cartoonist laying out a sketch of a scene and then coloring it afterwards. It's about bringing life into the music, adding points, transitions, question marks, whatever you can imagine. Very many of these little gimmicks could be found within the percussion section of this track. Let me focus on the different families of the percussion range, uh, of the percussion section of this track, starting with the membrana phones, all of the felt instruments. You can see that I've organized them on top of the percussion list. In this track, the membrana phones, in this case, Gran Casa, Toms, Timpani, and Snares, support the rhythm, the drive, and the impact of the track.
tombs of the Grand Casa are more sublime but emotionally very powerful. Toms and snares boost up the rhythm while the timpani add a certain orchestral grandeur, so to speak. I like the timpani of Iconica very much because they have a distinct attack while still having punch and energy that doesn't sound flat in the mix. Let's have a short look at the combination of Grand Casa, Toms and timpani in the main part here. You may have heard some myths about layering, like being the holy grail of professional sounding tracks. This triple A thing that I hate so much because who says that a track is triple A or double or single A or B or C whatever. So layering is indeed a very important thing, no doubt. But I always look at the quality of each and every instrument I want to use. What could they do best in a specific situation or context? So guys, first have a listen to the sounds you want to combine. It's easy to double up 257 snare drums, but what's really important is to combine snare drums of multiple tonal colors. But what I want to focus on in the field of layering within this track is what the different instruments do within the pattern. In this case here, the big grand casa drum marks only the important impacts of the rhythm, while the versatile and vivid toms play more notes and the timpani mark only a few of the notes. That's because the timpani have a nice boom and a very cool tail. You can easily play vivid rhythms on the timpani, we all know that. But in this case, I like the toms not being overwhelmed by the boom of the timpani. It's always a game with taste and emotion. And in this case, exactly this combination for me suits the music best. Let's listen to this passage once again, solo mode. And again with the whole orchestra. The next family of instruments are the pitched mallets. Glockenspiel, xylophone, tubular bells, and for good reasons I've added the celesta here. Because even if the celesta is played via keyboard, its sound belongs quite close to the mallets. These instruments add some tonal color to the track. The tubular bells have a religious and majestic quality at the beginning. Glockenspiel and xylophone sparkle up the melody elements in the main part, and the celesta adds some lyrical glow, so to speak, to the last chord. Let's have a look at the glockenspiel and xylophone combination. Let me briefly demonstrate how the instruments sound separately. A very nice combination. I love it. So we just take the time. As you can see, I use the xylophone in octaves. And let's just, um, let's just check out how this sounds with muted upper voice and together with a glockenspiel. See, now you can easily isolate Glockenspiel and xylophone and what happens, adding the xylophone in the upper range again, is that you 
have a more distinct attack in the upper voice and you don't realize oh a glockenspiel but it's a nice sounding um, combination of two instruments body attack and glow in the same time it's 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 the same uh, on a quite low level with layering what i said before while hovering towards the end of this walkthrough video i have to talk about additional reverberation what i quite like is combining algorithmic and convolution reverbs i've used the onboard plugins reverence and revelation for to demonstrate how you can achieve such a setup completely within cubase let's have a listen to the track with disabled reverbs and I first wanted to show you how reverberation is realized in this track. You see, I've inserted a send on every track with a little bit of difference within the instrument families and specific instruments when I felt that one or the other instrument could use more depth or more um, distinct attack or whatever. So, and, and a few of the instruments have algorithmic reverb on top. And that's quite a thing I, I liked while working with this library and with this particular track. So as you, you could just see how things are organized within this uh, reverberation topic here. So let's now have an AB a comparison with and without reverbs, starting without. with reverb for a direct comparison. A little bit flatter, but more direct and intimate without reverb, which I like very much. More depth and epic color with the reverbs turned on, and that's why I have used them here. As you may have heard, this is only a little detail, but for me it's a very important aspect of the track's emotion. Okay, there we are at the very end of this walkthrough video. I hope you've enjoyed this journey and we'll meet again soon. Have fun with this really cool orchestra library and go on being an ambassador of whatever music you do. Stay tuned. Bye bye.